I'm Dr. Dow Batchelor. I'm an adjunct fellow here at the uh, International Institute of Advanced Islamic Studies, Malaysia. And I'm also the founding author of the uh, Islamic Wellbeing Index for Muslim majority countries. Considered to be a sort of a independent uh, measure of uh, well-being of Muslim countries. Uh, to compare um, countries in terms of Islamic well-being, uh, of course, uh, well-being is uh, uh, when we are performing our um, duty and role as um, ibadis of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, when we have uh, uh, achieved this um, successfully, we have achieved falah, and we're in a state of um, Islamic well-being. And it brings to mind the uh, verses in Surah Al Fajr, Ayatuhan Nafsu Mutmainya. Um, also in a state of peace, Yuji ila Rabbiki Radiatam Marudiya, return to your Lord, uh, pleased, yourself pleased, and pleasing to Him, to your Lord. Fadkuli fi ibadi, enter uh, you amongst my devotees. Wadkuli jannati, and enter into my paradise. So, so there's a, a verse in Surah Al Rab verse 28 to 29, those who believed and find satisfaction, their hearts in the remembrance of Allah, unquestionably by the remembrance of Allah, hearts uh, find satisfaction. Those who have believed and done righteous deeds, um, for them is uh, blessedness, tuba, and a beautiful place of return. Uh, my first index was published in 2013, and uh, I referred to this verse right here as a basis for the concept of Islamic well-being. And it mentions Tuba, which is a state of blessedness. So we have um, benefited from the liberation of uh, those uh, uh, a group of scholars who were brought together by Imam Abu Rauf. Uh, he brought a group of scholars together to try to define the parameters of area index of governance, good governance in Muslim countries. So the scholars deliberated on this and uh, the use of Makassar of Sharia and the verse indicators to uh, reflect the uh, separate elements of the uh, higher objectives of the Islamic law. And um, this was all very beneficial for me to upgrade that original index that I did in 2013, which I did in 2021. And I was um, sort of uh, inspired, I guess, or uh, supported to go ahead um, and develop the index further and, and uh, base it on the Qasr al-Sharia, so it's, a, it's an update and a more grounded in the Islamic uh, teachings, um, scholarship, uh, to produce a, a better index. So uh, in 2021, uh, we had a change of positions and uh, uh, Indonesia took over from Malaysia. Malaysia dropped to third place and Tunisia came in second for 2022. We have the surprise finding that Maldives is uh, one and uh, Indonesia and Malaysia are sharing equal place uh, behind it. The, the difference is so small that it's uh, actually statistically insignificant and you can just consider that these countries are there together on top. Uh, the Islamic uh, Wellbeing Index is also an index of uh, resilience in the face of trials and difficulty. It shows that Indonesia, Malaysia, and Maldives performed very well in standing up to the pandemic. For Alhamdulillah, we found that the um, index is useful and beneficial. The indicators uh, that we use in the index uh, help us to identify uh, problems, set targets, track trends, understand outcomes, and uh, thereby uh, facilitate uh, the development of best uh, policy practices. So this is can be uh, potentially very useful for uh, governments, uh, NGOs, aid agencies, and so on and so forth. We are in a position to carry this forward, establish a, 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 a sort of a center. So I, I will be the director of the center and uh, we plan to have uh, hold an international conference in, in uh, 12 months time and improving and upgrading uh, this index over time to become uh, even more effective uh, in the future.